So this is a little game we've got at this state. We've got a player that can move around and jump and collide with different arrow projectiles in the scene. So to start off with, I'm going to create a little pause icon in the top left of the screen. All the textures that I'm going to put on the UI in this tutorial are imported with a texture type sprite. If you don't import them as sprites, you'll not be able to use them uh, in your UI. So to set up a button, you right click, do UI, button. And as this is the first uh, UI element that we've created, a canvas also gets created for us. I've created another tutorial on canvases if you want to understand them a little bit better. But for our purposes, all you need to know is they just render all the child UI elements underneath them. So if you look in the game view, the button that's been added here has two parts. It's got uh, an image component that's got a button attached, which is the, the white background there, and a text component which says button. You type anything in and that's just the text on front of that background. So for a pause button, we don't need the text, so we can take that out straight away. And then we'll switch the sprite source of this button to be a pause icon. Our button currently looks like this because it's got a default width of 160 and a height of 30. So if we change this to about 100, 100, we'll just move it up a little bit so it's on the screen. That's the button set up, but we still want to get a callback from it so we can react to it. Let's create a UI controller script and attach it to our canvas. In our script, we can just add a pause button clicked callback. And when it's clicked, we'll log out something like hello. And it has to be public so that our button can access it and call it. On our button, we add an on click callback by clicking the plus button here. There's then two parts of this. The first is the object which your script resides on. So this can be canvas because UI controller is on that object. And then the function on that object. So you go UI controller, pause button clicked. And if you click play, whenever you hit the pause button now, you're getting a hello callback. In the previous tutorial, we created a little pauser script. Uh, for this one, I've just deleted that and instead we'll do the pausing in the UI controller. We'll do that by setting time.timescale to be zero when pause is clicked. Just do a little bit of cleanup. I'll call this pause button and I'll anchor it to the top left of the screen, giving it little bits of offsets in, which looks a lot neater. Next, I'll add a resume button by duplicating the pause one calling it resume button. I'll change the sprites on it. And just so we can turn the buttons on and off as we need them, I'll add in two public uh, object references, one for pause button, one for the resume button. And when the pause button is clicked, I'll turn the pause button off and the resume button on, and the opposite for when the play button's clicked. Don't forget to update your resume button to point at the new function that we created there, play button clicked. Then just make sure you hook up these public references on your UI controller. And as our initial state is going to be playing, um, we'll want the resume button to be turned off by default. We're only going to want that to show when we're paused. And if you just try that out, you can pause, which pauses the game and switches this to the play button. You click play, resumes the game, switches to pause. Text is right up there with buttons as some of the most used UI components. So let's add a little counter for the player's remaining lives. So I'm going to add a text object in the same way that we added buttons. Call that score. I'll then change the colour of this to be white. Make the font a lot bigger and then give it a bigger text field, something like 400 by 100. Then anchor this to the top right. Give it a bit of an offset and right align it. And then just to make it look like our buttons, I'll add the outline component, which is going to draw a nice outline around it. Can make that a little bit thicker. We can then easily set the value of this text component in script. Before we do that, make sure you import the Unity Engine.ui namespace. And then you can set a public text reference. We'll call it something like score. And then on start, we can just change the text inside this um, text component by doing score.text equals test. Again, make sure you hook up your um, public reference to your text field. Hit play, and it changed the value of that text field. To set the proper value of it, we'll create a remaining lives variable. And whenever our player is hit, we'll decrease this value and then write back to the text UI. 
So we'll create another public function that our player script is going to be able to call, which decreases the remaining lives, and then we'll write back to the score text. We'll just do that in a separate function here so that we can also call that function in start to instantly set the score text to be whatever our score is. And by default, let's have that something like 100. And finally, let's set that up inside the player controller itself. Let's give that a public UI controller reference. And whenever we hit an arrow, we'll call UI dot arrow hit player. And hook the player up with the UI controller. Hit play. You can see our score text in action that decreases as we get hit by different arrows. With these two components alone, you can create a lot of UI setups. The GitHub repo for this tutorial is linked in the description for you to play with a bit further. The next video in this series explains the simplest ways to implement save data. Thanks for watching.